Hello, Radiant One, and a very big and a very warm welcome to Mastery, the show and podcast for brilliant spiritual beings just like you, having a human experience ready to ignite the mastery inherent in you, as well as grow and expand from within and wanting to lead with love in work, business, and life. Designed to activate the mastery already within you, here we merge the worlds of seen and unseen, magic and miracles with the mundane and the practical, spirituality with strategy, the energetic with the physical, and business, work, and life with a whole lot of love and soul. I'm your host, spiritual business coach, business developer, and radical love rebel, Maria Serafina. And it is my deep honor, my great pleasure, and joy to share this episode with you. I serve business owners and leaders wanting to learn and be supported as you navigate leading with heart and soul. I do that through the Spiritual Leadership Academy, the Spiritual MBA, and one-on-one spiritual business coaching full of intuition and energetic alignment. You can find out more about everything on my website, mariaserafina.com. Having been called to this show and podcast, it is my strong guess that mastery is already inherent within you, Radiant One. If you'd like to expand and amplify that mastery, download the mastery activation I've created for you. Originally released within my paid membership, The Elevation, I've now made it available to all. Go to mariaserafina.com forward slash MA or click the link in the description to receive it. Remember, if you enjoy Mastery, make sure you subscribe, like, comment, share, or leave a review to amplify the energy and love being shared in these transmissions so they can reach more and more gorgeous radiant beings like you. Today I'm joined by Dr. Tobias Angerstrip. Tobias is a medical doctor, a postdoc at the Center for Science and Faith at the University of Copenhagen, and a Reiki master. He's also an affiliate researcher at the Human Flourishing Project at Harvard University and at the Research Unit for General Practice at the University of Southern Denmark. His research has focused on existential and spiritual care, human flourishing, near-death experiences, and the relationship between faith and health. He spends a considerable amount of time on public dissemination of his research and views on health and is often cited in public media, podcasts, etc. When I found out that Tobias, in his latest PhD, among other findings, discovered that more than 80% of Danes surveyed reported having had a spiritual need within the last month, I knew I wanted to meet the person behind and have them share their own spiritual journey. As Tobias so openly shares, working and weaving as he does the fields of spirituality and science is no easy feat. Yet, if you ask me, so very, very necessary for the evolution of us, our realm, and world. To sit with him for this recording was such a blessing. Here is our sacred conversation. Uh, Tobias, welcome to Mastery. Uh, As I suppose with most of my guests, I am almost jumping with joy in my seat and excitement because I am I am thrilled to see like yeah I'm just thrilled to have you on. Um, would you start by introducing yourself? Tell us who you are and what you do, and then we'll jump from there. Sure. And uh, thank you for having me on the show, Maria. I've been really looking forward to, uh, forward to our conversation. So yeah, my name is uh, Tobias Anka Strip, and um, I'm uh, trained as a medical doctor. I've been working as a medical doctor in Denmark, primarily in family medicine. And then I have been uh, conducting quite a lot of research on the relationship between faith and health and existential and spiritual needs when mm. people become patients and also uh, been looking into near-death experiences. Mm. Um, I did, uh, I have a did my my doctoral thesis on that subject and then uh, I am also trained as a Reiki master so I'm also um, have been going through quite a, a bit of uh, training in uh, in this complementary alternative practice and uh, mm-hmm. have many uh, experiences from from that that also uh, kind of defines and and uh, influences the way that I see health and I see the body and I, I see see life around me. 
Yes. So that's obviously is also something that influences the way I work as a doctor, but also my research. Yes. And right now I'm employed at the University of Copenhagen as a postdoctoral researcher at something called Center for Science and Faith. Mm. So here we are discussing how uh, different debates on the uh, intersection between science and faith is relevant in many, many disciplines, actually. Yeah. Which is just, I mean, the, 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 the joy of knowing you exist, people like you exist, that will move our world towards a better place is just, it just fills, I mean, I just, yeah, it just, it, it fills me with gratitude because it's, I think one of the, when I first reached out to you and I reached out because you had, you'd done a PhD on um, um, the, yeah, spiritual needs and the, yeah, yeah, the spiritual yeah. needs of, for Danes and uh, with some astonishing uh, outcomes or results and and I in, in when you reach out to people on LinkedIn the way that I do I only do a brief introduction and and you, I, your response was something like oh it looks like you're weaving the worlds or merging the worlds as well I'd love to connect and I thought he gets me like he like yes because that's exactly what I've been doing for the past however long time but um, all of that aside, what I really want us to start off with is, is your own personal spiritual journey, how that began for you. Because I like to know the, like, the person behind all of that, like, like <laughs> what happened? Like, when what did... happened? Yeah. Yes. yeah. Yeah. I think it's a really good question. And first of all, I'm just uh, humbled by your gratitude. I'm, I, you know, I'm also just a a human being trying my best to do what I was put here to do, why why put here, yeah. why I came to do what I came came to do, basically, yes. right? I think we're yes. all trying to do that best we can. Um, but to address your question, I think it's actually quite a complicated story, and I and I really I don't really have all the answers uh, myself either. I think. At the moment in time when my sort of spiritual journey began, I was uh, I had a few years left at medical school, yeah. and um, I I I got a, a girlfriend at the time who was uh, very she was she was more open minded you could say into uh, tarot cards and uh, astrology and various sorts of div divination and stuff like that, and I was I was just coming from medical school right and had had this long history of almost 30 years of uh, atheistic thinking and uh, natural science, rationality, uh, programming uh, yeah. that I had been really uh, brought up with. And, and this and is a very strong part of the culture and Danish educational system, and especially also a medical school, of course. Mm. So, and, and I just, I kind of just sensed that um, there was something to, uh, reality, the experience I had of reality and the experience I had of myself that that really didn't match what I had been told at the medical school. Right? I, mm. I had spent six years studying uh, chemistry and anatomy and uh, enzymes and hormones and that everything in the body was a physical thing that we could be reduced to physical compounds. And mm. that was the story of it, right? And and I just ended up with the feeling this is this is not the entire story. I mean... It's uh, uh, at the very best. It's it's uh, probably a small part of the story, although it feels very important uh, to many people. Um, so I that kind of just threw me into an existential crisis. Right, uh, mm -hmm. I kind of lost the foundation for what I believed uh, in, what I thought was true, what I. Uh, all the beliefs I held as true for myself and for the things that I was doing, the things that I was valuing in my life, the things I had attached my future to and so on and so forth. And uh, what erupted was a very, very strong um, uh, yearning towards myself, basically. It, it was like an intense feeling in my chest, Mm. that I had to connect with myself somehow. I had lost myself somewhere along the way and I really just had to find find that connection and do and and, and get that connection established. Mm. So that was um, 
that's basically the best way that I can describe it. Many small uh, uh, signs, um, but primarily a strong, strong yearning towards myself and towards my soul. And um, yeah, obviously by then, if, when you when you then start out on that journey, usually that's accompanied by by a lot of signs right i mean a lot of synchronicity occurs mm. you start noticing the way the universe uh, sort of communicates and uh, at least i did and became aware of many many different things that also stimulated my journey right and then uh, from there on it kind of became a uh, this uh, for many years a sort of wrestling with figuring out what to do about these revelations I had had. Um, because I, I was to be a medical doctor, was I just throw that education in the bin? I mean, that was also yeah. a pretty radical decision. And eventually, obviously, it was um, uh, very intentional that I had that awakening when I was almost finished with medical school because I needed to, to, to be done with that. I needed, yes. I needed that uh, practice and that knowledge for the things that I am to do. Obviously. So I had to, I had to be so far along in my yes. medi medicational training to before yeah. I, I got that awakening, obviously, yeah. which I realized later on. Um, so I ended up becoming a medical doctor. I did my internship and residency, and uh, uh, did my uh, got my license to practice medicine and uh, so on and so forth. And then I was again struggling how to figure out uh, what to do with my life and the interest that I had regarding the existential and spiritual dimensions mm -hmm. of life that felt very difficult to connect to the medical practice that I was mm. uh, brought up in. Yeah. Uh, and so I got in contact with a professor that had been working on the relationship between faith and health for a decade. And I, yeah. it was instantly intriguing for me. I was like, what is, yes. is this something that people have been actually researching? I mean, yes. Oh my God! I have yes. I have to look into this, and I, I never really thought that I would become a researcher. I thought research was pretty boring. <laughs> uh, <laughs> I was like, this is something people do to for, for the to boost their CVs, right? It's not something that's really fun <laughs> or interesting. I, I have no interest or aspiration to do any research at all in my life. So that was my previous thoughts about yeah. the matter, yeah. but now it just became impeding. I just had to do it. I, I mean, there was just no other way that I could. Yeah. I just had to do it. I didn't know what to use it for or why, but I just knew I, I needed to do it. Yeah. Um, so that's why I ended up in the research field that I ended yeah. up in. Yeah. And then as as I went along also, I mean, this existential crisis that I had, uh, I went into a long therapeutic uh, counseling uh, track with, uh, with the counselor who was a Reiki healer, Reiki master. Okay. And, um, and, uh, basically inspired also by his practice and and, uh, and him I, I eventually ended up uh, training to become a Reiki healer first yeah. and then a Reiki master and yeah. um, so I did all that when was the and that was in, in the weekends while I was seeing patients in the weekdays and I was yeah. in, the, yeah. in the, the, the Reiki training course in, in the weekend so that yeah. That was a no pretty a pretty long uh, intense course. There are very many ways to to, to teach and train Reiki. Um, this was over a couple of years, like uh, mm. mon monthly weekends over a couple of years. So, For those uh, who are new to Reiki, can you just define it or explain what it is, or share a little about what it is? Oh, of course, yes, yes, of course. So Reiki is a uh, practice. Um, uh, unfolded some hundred years ago in Japan um, by actually a clergyman and a, a, it was a pastor and, and the and the, the the dean of a monastery school mm. and, um, and so he he developed or, or uh, revealed this the system system yeah. based basically on the on um, touch of hands right I mean mm. uh, uh, um, the idea is that the universe is 
is based on in, in an energetic universal life source key. Mm. You would call it in Sanskrit or uh, prana in Sanskrit or key uh, in, in 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 Chinese and uh, these yeah. kind of uh, languages. And then in, in the Christian situa- context, it would be uh, the Holy Spirit, right? Mm. So th- this kind of energy is. Uh, constantly everywhere and it can be used to, to be channeled into a yeah. client through your hands uh, by the proper initiation or yeah. um, training you can you can channel that energy and yeah. use it for specific purposes to yeah. stimulate the the client's own ability for self-healing basically yeah. yeah and then the system is also it it opens up i mean it's not conf- it's not a confessional practice it doesn't have any a specific uh, affiliation to any religious or theological understanding um, but it obviously works in, in a specific uh, philosophical framework you could say yeah uh, that opens up many many possi- yes. basically endless yes. possibilities yes. distant yes. healings um, uh, yeah because it's energy. Mystery, yeah. It's, yeah basically it is. yes exactly. everything is when um when you were going through that existential crisis as you name it w- were there things that you were trying out were there things that you were doing were there things that you were not doing like what was that I suppose I don't know if it was a daily or a weekly or if you, you maybe you didn't know it at the time you see it in reflection but were there things that you realized now that you were attracted to or doing um throughout yeah I think it's, it's a really good question as well, and one I have had numerous times. Um, yes, for sure. I was, yeah. I think I was, um, I was, I was just desperately trying to to understand what, what the heck yeah. was going on. Right. Yeah. I mean, yeah. What is who am I? I yeah. mean, and and in that search, I was. Um, looking into all various kinds of uh, practices and traditions. Yeah. Um, I mean, yeah, yeah very, I started reading up on a lot of astrology and yeah. a lot of uh, Kabbalistic mysticism, Christian yeah. mysticism, also Eastern mysticism, yeah. uh, tarot, astrology. Yeah. I started uh, doing acupuncture. I did all yeah. different kinds of yeah. different kind of meditation and yoga has been a uh, strong practice uh, yeah. also before that but there was also yeah. something that just uh, states especially kundalini yoga practice um, yeah. Um, so yeah so yeah many many different things and then the reiki yeah. practice became central right and i think yeah. um i think it's very common as well that people yes. And also, I mean, also yes. even also also shamanistic practices and yeah. heat uh, sauna practices. I've also, yes. um, I'm doing a lot of uh, yeah. like winter bathing and sauna rituals, yes. stuff yeah. like that. Um, and that that's why I'm uh, the reason why I asked is this, is specifically this because I want to highlight that there's not one like path. Yeah. And when we yeah. are in that place, very often we are seeking out different things. And yeah. Before we sort of land into what it is that is right for us right that yeah. there's no one path that this is yeah. the holy grail like that there are so if 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 viewers or listeners are in that place know that it's very normal to be yeah seeking out various things yeah Go ahead. Uh, yeah I, th- I think that's just an incredibly important point to raise yeah um that it's that's just incredibly normal to be you know yes. uh, it's like going into a candy store for the first time right everything starts everything yeah. is in color yes. you thought the, the world was black and white suddenly everything yeah. is in color everything looks fantastic and tastes yes. weird and strange and wonderful and it's just picking different things trying different yeah. things out and i think there's also um a pitfall to be aware of here they said i also think that whilst there's some uh uh, relevance in testing out various things i know where you're going. there's also a very yeah it's, it's also yes. very important to to stick with one practice yes because that just deepens the experience and yes. and the knowledge yes. attainable the wisdom yes. attainable and the yes. and the connection yes. attainable yes and i think you're very right i mean there's the 
innumerable ways to yeah. roam, uh, so to say. I mean, numerous paths, paths are, yeah. and I think they're all equally valuable and uh, feasible. Yeah. Some are maybe easier attainable than others. Some yes. are more uh, practical. Some are yes. more easily accessible in certain cultural yeah. situations. For instance, in, in Denmark, this is a Christian uh, cultural context, yeah. right? So obviously, there, there's rich Christian um, mysticism, rich Christian traditions yes. to to learn from in this culture. Yeah. Yeah. You don't have to, to visit the other side of the world to find this kind of uh, mysticism. It's also in this culture that we have here. Yeah. But I just think that focusing yes. on one discipline yes. is just immensely important. So you go... Yes go deep rather than yes. just go broad. And I think many people, yes. they just keep on doing many, many things. And they yes. then they, and then when they introduce themselves, they have 10 different courses in yes. 10 different uh, yeah. kinds of practices yeah. or approaches. So, yeah. Yeah. Um, and yeah. I think, and, I th and it's, it's also, but it's also very difficult to go deep, right? It's very difficult. It's challenging, very challenging. So yes. obviously, you pick different things out. The the, yes. the initial entrance is always overwhelming and inspiring, but then yeah. suddenly you come to this point where it's just it yeah. seems like the river runs dry, right? You're like, yeah. what happened yeah. here? Okay, this is not for yeah. me, or now I'm stop stop stopping getting the results that I was having before. What's going yeah. on? Yeah, and then I think there's just some reason to not moving on but continuing. Yes. yes. One of the one of my key things are discipline and consistency. Um, oh yeah, yeah. That that and, and oftentimes when you know when we talk about spirituality, we tend we tend to have this idea that it's just supposed to be there and just supposed to come. Mm. But but if you don't enact the discipline, if you don't cons you do the consistency, and if you just keep jumping from like you say from from place to place, and and that's why I'm saying like in the initially it's normal to have this candy shop thing, and then yeah. eventually there's something that you're going to be drawn towards further, and that's mm -hmm. where it's key to start having like do it for thirty days, do it for ninety days, do it for a longer yeah. period of time, commit yourself to it, and then. Yeah. Uh, see what happens because it's easy to just say oh you know I tried this it didn't work well how long yeah. like did you give it did you actually give it a go so that's really important yeah. like discipline and and yeah dif discipline and, and also ritual like I meditated for what 20 years close to 20 years and of course I now I have I carry that stable stillness within me like it's a pillar that's grown and grown and grow it's no matter where I go it's there but that's because of my consistent daily practice with it my yeah, yeah. non-negotiability with it does that yeah. make sense yeah it makes perfect yeah. sense I mean I think somebody I read a book once it takes I think 10,000 hours before yes. we master something right I mean this yeah. Also, yeah. and it's yeah. the same yeah. as spiritual practice as well yeah. yeah and it just deepens the connection and the yeah. uh the sensitivity as well and yeah. um well, but, but yeah 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 i think it's yeah i think it's just uh, yeah so you mentioned meeting that professor and recognizing or realizing that there was actually people who were studying um the 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 connection between faith and and science um what what happened there and like I suppose because I suppose that in what I'm hearing and I don't want to put words in your mouth but before you then you were actually struggling and I think that that is very real like I've seen this you know with business in terms of spirit because that's what I do I weave spirituality in business and it's like mm. people are like can you do that it's but I, I can't see how you cannot not do that um yeah. and and uh and so I suppose that the challenge for you was to how do you reconcile the entire, not only just like medical um, mm. science, but also the whole system behind it? Because our mm. entire healthcare system is built upon mm. that. So, yeah. what, what what let you to? Do you know what happened before you had that connection with that meeting, like with that professor, or like was it like serendipitous? Like what happened? How did you discover that? Uh, so basically, I was just, I think, I mean, I, um, so, well, so basically, I think I've just been, been, 
been very wisely led along the way by powers I was wasn't yeah. really aware about it. also at that time, even before I realized that obviously. Um, so I was it was actually my my sister in law who had been she's a nurse and she had been to a lecture with with this professor at the university. So I had I had no idea about who he was, but she yeah. she had attended this lecture and. She knew that I was having these kind of uh, thoughts and yeah. that I started my training to become a Reiki healer, uh, the first initiations. And so she was like, well, maybe this guy could be interesting for you to, to yeah. talk to. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, and then I just um, yeah, unsolicitedly wrote him an email, right? And and um, now the rest is basically history. But, but I think what you're pointing at is also that it's just been immensely difficult honestly yes. uh, to to reconcile these things and i think for the for the first many years um the thing about me being a reiki practitioner uh, that was something i held very privately as well yes. uh, because i was i was uh, basically afraid of being burned at the stakes right yes. and, i mean yes. Uh, yes. and and uh, i mean 500 years I would have been right so yes. um so so yes. obviously that was uh, I had to have some reason for for that yes. uh, um so I so I had, I had that very privately those interests and, yeah. and those those practices I had those very privately yeah kept those to very to very close friends and family obviously partners yeah. um and then I think at one point uh, a couple of years back I kind of just realized that, I mean, I just have to be clear about who I am uh, because clarity is just, um, it makes everything easier. People people kind of tend to think that clarity is, I, I guess, more dangerous or makes things more complex or, I mean, many people are afraid of clarity, right? Afraid of showing who they are and what they believe in and what they what they think about well, it's not uh, so much well i see i don't see it as clarity as much as i see it living your truth like like yeah yeah like, well it, it might yeah but that would be the same for me yeah. yeah 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 so living your truth is, is for me also being being clear about what yes. you are and yes and also, i yes. mean living your truth is also you know practicing what you preach right say yes. do what you say having yes. sort of alignment yes. between yes. your values your practices yes. the way yeah. you approach and Yes. Uh, yes. Introduce yourself to people, stuff like that. Yes. So anyway, the clarity that really yeah. came was just Im important for me because yeah. I realized I'm, I mean, by being unclear about who I am or not really living my true self yeah. or doing it yeah. in the shadows, so to speak, yes. uh, then you can kind of uh, instigate that you are like friends with everyone still, right? I mean, you yes. could... In, yes, in every yes. sphere you can like yes. fit like a chameleon right yes and um, energetically it's just muddled like it's yeah people don't know who you are it's like, like exactly exactly yeah. very muddled that's a good way to express it yeah express, yes. very much exp good way to express it and then, uh, so i just realized that i had to to become uh, clear about who i was and what i do and yeah and uh and live that uh, truth everywhere i i am yeah. right so so and because and obviously, it, it creates sort of uh, resistance in some spheres, but it also yeah. creates attractions in others, right? Yes. Because it becomes and, much yeah. easier for people to relate to yes. uh, or distance yes. themselves. Yes. If they don't. Because you're energetically clear, like like you are. Yeah, exactly. And, and, and one thing that I think is really important to highlight is that I, you can you can correct me if I'm wrong, but this didn't yeah. happen overnight. It wasn't like okay, yeah. one day I'm this and oh. one day I'm that. It's a step by step process. Yeah, There's multiple years, multiple fear years, and worries and concerns and doubts and so it's it's not like because I remember when I many many years ago I decided love was going to be my way in life no matter what and I thought you know heavens would open angels would descend rose petals will be strewn because I had chosen love right and and instead what I got was everything that was our resonance with love was just like thrown in my face and still is yeah. so that I was able to move through that it's it's not yeah. like things are you're not taking out of the situation you're being then being uh I suppose like a diamond transformed, transmuted through the process, right? Yeah, 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 yeah. Very much, and it's and it's a it's a really painful process as well. Yes. 
um, because yes. it just, uh, and I also I touched briefly upon that in the beginning of a conversation that it requires you to um, let go of, of all the attachments that you had, right? Any yes. thoughts of ideas about yourself as a person, your identity, yes. all the things that you have attached your future to, your interests, yes. your yes. whatever, right? Yes. And, yes. and that detachment is a painful process. Really, yes. I mean, it's, I mean, it's it's like uh, saying goodbye to good friends, right? I mean, yeah. it's it's uh, it's yeah. f- full of sorrow because yeah. I mean, it's it's not like you were a worse human being before, or mm. the things yeah. you thought you you valued was mm. poor choices or whatever. But it's just simply isn't relevant anymore. It's not yes. it's not aligned with your future and it's not yeah. aligned with your potential. So you just have to let it go, right? But it's still. Yeah painful it did serve yeah. you at one point yeah. and it's and it's, yeah. you're familiar with it like yeah. a good friend yeah so it's um and i've also found i completely agree and i've also found that the satisfaction and the joy that is in living your truth in living mm. in alignment with that truth for me at least far exceeds anything of this world it's 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 an experience that i cannot that's hard to put into physical world like in in human words because mm. it transcends mm. it, it it's it permeates my field yeah. um yeah does that make sense yeah 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 yeah, yeah it makes perfect sense yeah um yeah i'm, I'm glad to hear that uh, because i think that's it's definitely something that I can relate to in various aspects of my life, but also I think I can also just uh, I honestly put out that I'm I'm also not entirely there yet because no no it's just uh, and it's it's an, <laughs> no, no. I'm not there yet <laughs> yeah, yeah. because it's but it's because and that's I think it's also an important point. I mean I've I've uh, gone a very very long way on on my path right and yeah and it's. And it's not been an easy one to thread. Not many people have been threading it in the in the like in the way in the places that I go, right? Mm-hmm. So there are not many people to follow, so to speak. Mm-hmm. Um, but I haven't really fully reconciled these things because, no. as you mentioned as well, the places that I work and the places yes. that I yes. that I uh, have my daily practice uh, yes. is just so not aligned with that kind yes, of uh, yes. living right yes so it's just so it's, it's still a yes. i wouldn't say necessarily a struggle but it's still challenge yeah ch- it's still a challenge right yeah. and uh yeah. um, there's still yeah, days I mean, where i'm i'm uh, worried about pikes and, uh, and torches and, <laughs> yes yes you know, no but right? that um, that makes yeah. total sense and i think yeah. that I don't want to give the impression that I have a, like, I'm not like, I have arrived. There's nothing left for me to do. Like, that's not where I'm at at all. Like, it's, it's just, it, it's, it's a both and, and that's what yeah. I see that that's, that's what I find so interesting about you. First of all, the, the word that keeps coming up is breaking the waves, breaking the waves, breaking the waves. Like you are, you are, I mean, again, and this is where I get emotional because you are breaking the waves for those who are to follow. Like you, there's mm. people who's going to, um, going to look to your research who's going to then have mm. ideas and create and build upon because that's what mm. we do we we create foundations for others to stand upon mm. like we that's yeah. that's the continuation of life yeah. and and that's why it's so beautiful and and again mm. I, I like I, I thought that it was like oh i'm gonna arrive and then i arrive and then that's done but it's like no it continues because we're like i'm yeah. a spiritual being having a human experience i am consistently moving through life life is evolving and changing expanding and growing and being challenging and amazing mm. and all of this it's not either or it's both and and that's what you're yeah. doing yeah sorry for ranting yeah um, no 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 i think it's an, it's an important it's an important uh, aspect, or right, or an important point, and I, I'm getting goosebumps as well as you said, uh, because it's just it's just the way it is, and I I think that's just also at one point I just I was just uh, very demotivated also about the state of the world, right? I think it's of just yes. a horrible <laughs> yes. in so many ways, yes. an, an overwhelmingly yes. horrible yes. time to be living in, right? I yes. mean, yes. Uh, even from where I'm sitting, it's an 
insanely yes. privileged position in society yes. and globally. Yes. yes. And I'm just even, I mean, yeah, I'm doing research. I mean, what does it matter when everything is just falling apart? And I was just, yes. at one point I was in a really, just in a really dark place. And that was many, many times during this journey, obviously. Yeah. And I was just like, why am I here? I mean, is there any, I can't do this if there's no really good, uh, why, right? Yeah. Simply just why. If you can, if if you can't give me an answer, yes, I'm going back. <laughs> right. yes, I'm like, uh, you're and, taking off. I'm like, yeah, exactly. you suckers, I'll choose another one. Yes, exactly, yeah. exactly. Yeah. And 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 the the answer just was just immediate, right? To relieve suffering, right? And that can just yes. to relieve suffering. And that can just be done in so many ways. Um, yes. And it it's a universal truth still yes. uh, for what it's worth. And uh, I think my, my intention has always, as you also say, I mean, I, my intention has also always been to 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 be build bridges between worlds, right? Yes. Uh, in in many, many ways I'm doing that. Yes. And uh, and then to be a a a light a light a light for others to follow, right? I yes. Mean, Yes. A, a light, a, like a lighthouse, you could say. Yes. Right? Yeah. Yes. 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 I mean, it's just, it's a horrible storm out there, right? <laughs> yes. But you have yes. to. And we need, need some way to know yes. to navigate to. Yeah. 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 For sure. Yeah. For sure. How did you? Because um, again, for me, like I used to like on my spiritual journey, I would like denounce you know, Western medicine and, you know, no painkillers and no blah, blah, blah. And then back in 2015, I had a, I, I started out in end of 2014, I had a like slip, I had sciatica, I started having sciatica. And then um, September, August of September of 2015, it turned into a full slip disc. Mm. And I knew without question that it, it had, there was a deeper spiritual meaning behind it. I just mm. could not figure out what it was. And then after like, I think, I don't know, just three to six weeks of just is like pain beyond anything. I couldn't sit. I couldn't meditate. I couldn't do my daily rituals. I couldn't do anything. I surrendered and got, you know, support, like got to the hospital, got thing, got, and, and I was like, just give me all the drugs. Like, like, because I was like out of my mind with pain. And then December 29th, 2015, um, I was doing something online. It had to do with finances and I heard my back click into place and I didn't think anything of it because at that time I was taking a you know cocktail of medicine three times a day. So I didn't think anything of it until I woke the next day and realized like, what's, what's different. And what was different was I hadn't woken at four to take my next cocktail mm. and it was seven 30 and I was feeling fine. I was, I wasn't, I wasn't pain free, but I was, I was, I was in discomfort and I yeah. was like, wait, what? So it, 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 I really like in hindsight, it, like a week later, I was out of the medication because my back had clicked. It had adjusted itself based upon mm. what had happened and what, yeah. um, and that's when I realized like, it's not either or when it comes, mm. it's both. And, and, yeah. and, and that's why I think that your research and what you do, you just being who you are in this mm. world, living your truth is so mm. important because you're paving mm. the way for both and not mm. either. Does that make sense? Like that it's perfect yeah. sense. Yeah. yeah. I'm getting goosebumps. Yeah. yeah. When did, how did you, because I know that the PhD that you was, what was what brought my attention uh, towards you was when did you, when was, when did that come up for you? When did you have that idea about the, 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 um, the, um, the spiritual needs in mm. in, in in Danish in Danish people, and mm. I think this is like the world like world's largest research study on this. When did mm. how did that come about? How did when when did that happen? Um, yeah, so basically, I think the the initial idea was uh, that that came from from this from the professor that I mentioned actually because he'd, yeah. he's he'd, he'd been in the field for many times uh, for for a long time, right? So yeah. he'd, he'd been. Yeah planning this kind of research and uh, was looking for the right guy to 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 to, to do it basically right yes. and uh, then I came along and I did some tweaks and uh, made it my own as well obviously yes. um uh, but I just think it it just it was just um it just became clear to me that uh that people 
patients have uh, well people in general but also patients when 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 I when I met patients I there was also just more to it than just that pain or yes. the disease right obviously we are, we're we're just so much more yeah. and um and that was just something that I really didn't see mm. being taken care of right yeah people are going through some of the worst crises of their lives in those hospitals right they yes. they come with their hearts and their hands to the general physician right and yes and we just have to be sensitive about yes uh, and obviously we need to take care of those physical things because that's also 100%. what medicine yeah. is about right and yeah. it's and 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 I'm really just also happy about what you say about the, the both end because I, I obviously if you would I'm I couldn't agree more. Yeah. Um, it's not like there's like conventional medicine's bad and no. I mean it's I mean everything is God given right so yes. I mean this yes. I mean yes. angels paved the way for modern medicine too right yes. so and yeah. and these kind of uh, tools and treatments that we have available uh, uh, we should we need to use them wisely yes. but yes. probably more wisely than we are currently using them yes. most of the treatments right yes um because we're disregarding the yes spiritual or the holistic or alternative i don't like the word alternative because yeah. it's no not yeah me neither i prefer yeah. holistic or spiritual but i know that yeah. some people for me like i shared with the doctors what had happened like i, I told yeah. them i i, I that, you know i had my heart in my throat when i told them because this like this was almost 10 years ago I but yeah. i was like i'm going to tell them the reason why my back clicked into place and i don't care if they believe me or not because yeah. it's the truth it's it's what happened so yeah. so um so it's not about yeah, yeah. and I, I i i see that now for me it's like i don't i don't try to preach to anyone about anything i share my truth mm. and whether like, yeah. knowing that i'm planting seeds and whether that you know blooms or sprouts now or a thousand years from now i i'm not the master of that like i, yeah. I just speak my truth sorry i cut <laughs> you off in terms of the no i, th I think that's also i couldn't agree less uh, i could agree more more yeah. either i mean that's that's simply also what i'm 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 trying to do i think yeah and i think and that's very very difficult because that's also just what uh, i think that's the only thing that you can do basically yeah. you can yeah. simply yeah. you can inspire right yes uh, by but telling you're also the truth. using you're using science-based methodologies yeah. to actually that's the thing like i'm saying like science is now proving what you know eastern mm. philosophies or whatever have known for for millennia which i love yeah. because that's that's opening like you say it's it's angel-led yeah. god-led it's opening people up in a way yeah. that's like huh okay maybe there's something about this yeah 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 yeah, yeah exactly exactly and i think it's uh yeah yeah, yeah, people people will have to 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 take those claims for themselves, right? And experience yes. it. And and that's basically also what I what I what I I mean, I'm not preaching or missioning anything. I mean, people will have to to to, to make their own ideas. Yes. Um based on what's out there. And I I think I think experience is uh one of the uh, more central ways to do that right i mean basically personal experience i think that's I, I i'm not sure if it's the only way to truly know something by now i'm, I'm still a question i i'm i haven't made up my mind entirely about yeah, that yeah. but anyway it's an it's an important yeah. way and yeah. that just brings it back to practice right yes because that's the way that you experience yeah um the world for yourself yeah yeah, yeah. One of the things that I, I, I recently read about this study, and I'm not sure if I'm getting this correctly, but I think it was in uh, Olbo, um that there were researchers who had found out that, like, I think people with diabetes had, um, I think it was like 80% of them also had um, struggled with loneliness. Mm. Um and then they flipped it on its head and they said, okay, so what, like, where else is loneliness attributing, uh, could could it be an attributing factor to other physical um, uh, diseases? And I think mm. they found out that, like, it's literally, like, in, in all of the major ones. And mm. so rather than trying to, quote, unquote, fix diabetes, what would happen if we looked at loneliness instead? Mm. Yeah. Which 
which again, that's another way of looking at things holistically because loneliness yeah. is not necessarily something that is a, but it, but if it has a physical symptom, mm -hmm. like what will happen yeah. if we then quote unquote fix the loneliness rather than giving them drugs against diabetes? Not again. Yeah, 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 yeah. Goes in, right? Yeah, um, yeah, yeah, yeah. So you're when you did the when you did the the PhD, um, when how was it like how was it hooked for you like how was you how was you like how are you like yes I'm going to do this how was the process throughout it um also like because like I think it was sent out to a hundred thousand people and 24,000 mm. people responded or something like like mm. how was how, how, what was that experience for you so yeah. the <laughs> well so the entire doctorate is that's just I think for everyone going through that is just um uh, joyful at times and really challenging at times and so on but i think um uh you're pointing at a very specific uh experience also i mean what was it like to send out a survey on this to 100 000 people yes um that specific uh incident was um uh, very extraordinary to put it mildly i mean because I mean, you can um, just, I mean, energetically to yes. send your truth to so many people. I was just, I mean, that, yeah. of all kinds of w w walks of life. I mean, young, old, any, I mean, yeah, 100,000 randomly selected adult things, right? That was just intense. Yes. I, I was, um, yeah, I was, uh, basically, I was. I was hit by anxiety attacks. I was yes. just the the, yes. the the day surrounding that yes. was just horrible, yes. horrible, horrible. Yes. I mean, so 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 many people uh, poking and prying into my energetic system, right? Coupling, yes. Yes. linking themselves to to me and what I yes. was doing. Um, some people were very positive. Were like, "Oh, I'm so happy that you're investigating this," and others were like, "Just." demonizing it yeah. mean, what the, who the fuck are you to send me this kind yes. of stuff and yes. stay out of my life what i mean yeah i mean in the most brutal ways i mean you just yeah. get so many various responses and in such a process and i was just how very did you take intense care of yourself? how did you take care of yourself uh, practice that? practice practice yes. i was just protecting myself and uh energetically and uh, yes. sticking to my practice so intensely those days yeah yes, yes. Uh, making sure to just stay centered and yeah protect myself yes um get a lot of guidance get a lot of <laughs> yeah i mean everything i could master basically yeah um, i mean it was just uh, i haven't thought about that for a long time actually but it was I kind of swore to myself I wouldn't do it again ever. <laughs> <laughs> well, well, who knows? <laughs> <laughs> who knows? Uh, because I mean, I guess I I don't know who could have done it if I hadn't, right? So, so um, yeah. And yeah, well. and then how was it starting to receive? Like, wh how what was it like to starting to receive the pattern? Like because what was it like 80% of the, mm, the people who mm, responded mm, expressed that they had had a need? Mm. Yeah, I think that was, that was also just very, I mean, those kind of things get, they get caught up in all kinds of statistical things and uh, stuff. Right. But it, I think it was just uh, very, that was just very interesting. Right. And it, obviously it confirmed our, our hypothesis, right. That this is, this is important for people. And obviously, yeah. as again, as as I mentioned regarding clarity, people some people will be attracted to it, some other will distance themselves from it. So, mm -hmm. so when the paper came out, it was also uh, a lot of people. It got a lot of media attention. A lot of people thought it was amazing. Right? People, I still get emails from people saying, "What an, an amazing research!" I'm using it so much. I'm so happy for it. And sometimes yeah. it just gets bashed in, in the media or yeah. by other people like 
oh, yeah. the, the methods are wrong or the statistics are poor. Or, yeah. uh, this is not something we should be investigating by science, in science and the universities and yeah. blah, blah, blah. So yeah. it just, and, and it's quite interesting because I'm, I'm also finding myself on the verge of going uh, uh, into those things. I mean, engaging in those things. And basically I'm, I'm, I'm trying my best not to, because yeah. as you mentioned, it's just, this is my, well, I'm, I'm not sure if it's my truth anymore. And, and it was yeah. just, it, it was the truth that we found or whatever yeah. you can say. Yeah. It. Um, I'm just putting it out there. People can do yeah. with it what they want. Yeah. And, and I will probably keep doing what I'm doing as yeah. long as I'm allowed to. Right. I mean, yeah, if, yeah, at some yeah. point, if I'm breaking a, too many waves. <laughs> if the waves break me, I don't know. <laughs> then, I, then I'll just, then I'll just. Uh, but again, it's do my stuff somewhere else. I, I again, I sort of see it like the one, the the study that I was sharing just before about the loneliness. Because what mm. if there's some way that faith yeah. can have a supportive or holistic yeah. path in that. And what if that then, as you say, relieves suffering ultimately? Mm, yeah. Does it really matter yeah. that you didn't, you know, cut off a leg or open, you know, yeah. the cavity or like, does like yeah. if the if the goal is the yeah. to relieve human suffering and to yeah. I like I like to flip it on its head. For me, it's about elevating the frequency and the vibration of our realm, like to elevate mm. the level of experience our experience of success our experience of satisfaction of joy of all of that yeah if, does it really matter if it happened without you know cutting yeah. off a finger or like yeah yeah that's my argument as well that i mean and i i think i mean that is that that is the argument right i mean we're doing yeah. uh and it's just uh it's just so clear also that we're doing all kinds of different things, both in society at large, but also in healthcare systems yeah. uh, to relieve suffering that we have yeah. no evidence for. We don't know why mm -hmm. we're doing, we're just doing it. And yeah. I yeah. mean, so it's not really uh, that uh, you could say radical or, or um, yeah. it's not a strange thing. I mean, no. it's just, I mean, it's just, yeah doing what everybody would want to do right yeah, I mean, yeah. so so it's, it's yeah. just it's just a different approach yeah, yeah. Uh, but in a in a danish culture where it's just where we have such a secular secularized culture with yeah uh, very unnuanced uh, language regarding yeah. faith and religion yes, and yes. Yeah. Christianity and I mean people yeah. think it's about some old guy with a bed sitting on a cloud or whatever. I mean it's just that's just archaic nonsense, right? I mean, yes. um, it has nothing Coming to, to do judge with... you. Yeah, okay. yeah, exactly. It, it has nothing to do with faith or love or anything like that. That's that's that are the core values and virtues of Christianity as well, right? Yes. So it's just it's just so immensely complex. Uh, <laughs> and that's what so it, I call us I call us Lala Christians. Like I I'm not part and I, I Lala I, what is Lala Lala yeah. Christians like yeah Lala Christians because. Because we're like, we go to church. Well, I don't remember, but we went to church during like for Christmas and f like, that's when the churches are full. Like, and for, you know, baptisms and marriages and stuff, weddings, that's when we go to church. But the rest of the year they're like, there's no, and I think that that's part of the reason why your research showed what it did. Like 80% mm -hmm. of people have, have had a spiritual need within the past month mm -hmm. because, because there is no integration of the, not of yeah. Christianity, because I, for me, yeah organized religion i'm like yeah you know i i recognize it that it supports a lot of people and good on you but uh, mm. yeah no for me it's about the i don't even want to say it's about the both the personal because i'm the more the more i work on my shit mm. the more it supports the collective as well because mm, the more for it, sure. you know, the happier for sure. we all are yeah is the way mm. i see it um what are your um Oh, I felt like uh, one thing can, I want to mention is because can ahead. I ask you a question regarding that? Yeah, go ahead. Go ahead. What What do you think about because that's actually something that's been haunting myself for a while? Because uh, one thing that I think, I mean, there's a lot of there's a lot to be said about religious institutions, right? But one thing that I think is really is really strong is the community, right? Um, the mm -hmm. sort of shared mm -hmm. value set 
And um, so I don't affiliate with any religious tradition mm -hmm. either, specifically, um, since I, be, I believe in a universal experience of the divine, yes. right? That's not yeah. a, a specific to any religious uh, theology, but but I but I do kind of sometimes lack a community of yes because yeah. because when you're doing when you're taking yes. the journey the way I have. Yeah. Uh, you just pick and choose many different things and then yes. oh, and then you yes. find this I'm yes. sticking to, to this thing yeah but it's really difficult to find people that stick to the same thing right that yes. have the same yeah. kind of journey that have the same sort of experiences yeah. Yeah. um so it's it's more difficult to get together uh, around specific practices or a yes. specific community obviously you yes. can yes. have a cacao ceremony or uh whatever full moon things or whatever I mean that's yeah uh, I don't know. What are your thoughts on that? On the community aspect, I, th I think that um, building building community without yeah, building a specific uh, theological or philosophical common value set. Yes. So for me, my my principle is that love is the way, and mm -hmm. and in that principle. I don't attach it to any specific practice. So yeah. I have, you know, I've I've trained in places where where people seem to think that that is the holy grail, that there's only one way, and that it's our way that is the right way in spiritual mm -hmm. communities as well as you know religious ones. Yeah, 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 yeah. And for me, I think that when we come from the place of love being the way, it really doesn't matter what your external practice is because your foundational value is that I am worthy I matter and mm. um that it that my ex my expression of it quote unquote doesn't matter mm. Mm. Um, so so that's that's the way I view it and and that in in that sense I have people I have friends from very very different walks of life mm. um people who are chronically ill, people who are not, people who, you know, were born with silver spoons in their mouth, people who are not, because mm. the, the the guiding, our guiding principle is the same. Mm. And that's where I'm building community from. Mm. That's where I, my inclusivity and my diversity and all that comes mm. from. Mm. I, I don't, um, because I, I think that even in the spiritual community that turns to be like this, oh, it is, you know, tarot or it is, right then now the rave is human design and i love human design yeah. um but it's 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 one way it becomes an institutional as well right it yes. becomes yes uh as uh I'm, I'm, i wouldn't say sectarian but it comes as uh, yeah yeah uh closed uh as yeah the religious yes. institutions that they try yes. to divert yes. themselves yes. from right yeah. yes so that's, yeah and when it and it you know i had a i don't even know if you know this but i had a i have a pocket it, i it's i don't record for it but i have a podcast named the magdalene voices which was all about yeshua mary magdalene and all, and all the different yeah. kind of stories we were told about that um mm. um because i wanted to give a different perspective on it because mm. i wanted to because the way that i view religion or christianity especially is like it's become very um i don't know what the right words are but it's 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 not very inclusive it, it's it's sort of for for me yeshua taught love is the way that's that's mm. that's what, yeah that's what they yeah. taught and yeah. when you come from that place there's um mm. yeah there's not a whole lot of casting people out does that, mm, did that no, answer yeah, your yeah, question yeah, in yeah, terms yeah. of it? Yeah, I, think so, it's a, so, I think it's a beautiful, beautiful answer. Yeah, Thank yeah. you for it. You're welcome. Thank you for asking. Um, I suppose because I can see that we can go on uh, forever and ever. Um, what are your, would you share about your, <laughs> I feel like throughout this conversation, you've literally said things, so many things that I've already said uh, or th that I'm thinking of, and then you're saying it, and I'm like, this is whoa. Um, oh, two things I want to mention. One thing is, I have, I don't know if I like, I don't, I haven't developed it, but like, based, I realized recently that I, I have what's called, I call it the OAT method, O A T, so observe, assess, test, and tweak. And I'm realizing now that that's actually something that sort of compares to scientific like methodology mm -hmm. because I like, um, as spiritual as I am, I'm also very logical and practical. I like to think, I like to make things like, 
practical. I did that in my career mm -hmm. when I was in, you know, the financial industry and, and now I'm doing it in the spiritual world as well, mm -hmm. because I'm, I'm saying people have to keep their discernment. Like you don't like, if someone tells you that they have the one truth and like, I just run, like run far, like, yeah. and if they're trying to make you disregard your own sense of checking in and tuning in, mm -hmm. like that's just, that's just a no-go. And so this oat method that I have is like observe, observe, like assert, observe over long, because, I, and I want to share it because for people who are spiritual, who might not be as science-based as you are, it's actually possible to take some of the scientific approaches into your daily life and be like, mm. observe over a period of time, what's happening, then start mm. to assess that, 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 that data or that, whatever you find, and then test and tweak it. Like yeah. you can do that in your everyday life. Um, yeah, Sure. But what I wanted to ask you is like, would you share, like start a, start out, finish off by sharing your, like, what are your daily, like, what are your daily or monthly or what are your practices today? Where And I, and I knowing that that is where you're at now, it might not be where mm. you're at in a year from now or three yeah. weeks from now, but where are you at mm. now with your, with your practices? And so right now, my, uh, <laughs> my, my practices have been completely disrupted by, by, Babies. <laughs> oh, my babies. Oh, yeah. Uh, uh, they have a way of doing that. Yeah. <laughs> they have a way of doing that. So yes. I could say before before them, <laughs> I was, um, I did self healing every day, at least 30 minutes, right? And um, some sort of physical practice as well. Yeah. Um, and uh, would also do retreats every now and then. And, yes. um, also pilgrimage every now and then to yeah. two sites that I found. Uh, I did a lot of sort of uh, popular tourism when I was younger, right? I yeah. hitchhiking East, Southeast Asia, like every yeah. other young guy and would like to, but now I'm just, I'm done with that kind of tourism. Now I'm only yeah. visiting sites that really matter to me. But yeah. um, so now we have two small kids, my wife and I, um, yeah. The oldest one, she's turning two, and the, the little one is four, five months old. Okay. Yeah. And so that just completely disrupted my and yes. our my and our, our practices, right? Because they just yes. take off everything. Yes. And so basically they've become my practice. Yes. Obviously. I, I tend to try and do self-healing as often as I can still. Yeah. Um and then quite actually quite interesting, I started uh practicing taekwondo and uh, martial arts yeah uh, because i was uh, there was a few motivations for that because i was thinking that first of all i had just been doing doing so much yin activities in my life just yes. you know yes. slow yoga and meditations yes. and grounding and slow things internal yes. introspective things yes and i just was i just have to do something external thing yes. something expressive explosive yeah. uh, with yeah. my physical body so I, yes. I started doing yes. taekwondo which also have a whole philosophy and and so that was also important for me obviously that it also had some yeah. uh, ethical perspective yeah and then also because i thought that well now i now i'm a family father right i i need to be able to defend my family <laughs> I have to be able to to do That's just surprising. a slight a slight bit of fighting, right? I mean, yeah, so, yeah. Um, I mean, an academic wouldn't survive long in you know, I don't know times of yeah uh, food scarcity or whatever. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know. Um, yeah, so, That's so beautiful. You want to fight for your family, like That's like I want to. I it's just, like I just felt that somehow. I was kind of very strange. That's become a that's become the physical practice mainly for me now. Yeah. Uh, taekwondo and then self healing and then my kids. Yeah. And kids are just that's just insane. I mean. Yes. You think they disrupt your practice and your life and just uh, you know. It's a noise sounds to everything you you were doing and trying to do, yes. and you realize just a, a slight bit more every day that they're just they are just showing the way. I mean, they're just teaching you every second of yes. the day. They're just teaching you. Yes. Yeah, yeah. And that's just, and that's also a very it's a that's a very painful process to go through. It's a very painful process of detachment as well. Yeah, but also and intense experience of just letting go and surrendering 
yes. um, to the needs of this these other yes. beings, right? That yeah. are just yeah. that are just there, just complete surrendering of your own thoughts yes. and needs and wishes yes. and wants. Yes, just yes. reverence and in honor of these small kids. Yeah. So that's basically become my, become my practice now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And um, I love how that's a spiritual practice for you. Yeah. Uh, it has become. It has become. Uh, yeah, I mean, and that's also as you mentioned, it's that's also a transitioning period. I mean, in the in the, in the beginning, I resisted it harshly. I mean, I was obviously I loved my kids uh, since they came yeah. intensely, but. I was just furious about how my life just turned upside down. Right? I mean, yeah, yeah. Uh, couldn't see friends, couldn't do my practices, couldn't do what I wanted or wished to work. Yeah. So yeah, so now my my kids are my practice. And that and that and 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 again, that just again goes back to what we were talking about earlier. How life is like that is the that is the journey. Like it, we 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 don't we don't arrive at one place and be like, okay, I am yeah. done now. Right. So yeah. personally, I'm, I, I just realized that I'm going through perimenopause, which is like, mm. what? Like, and so, so, so yeah. that's another, that's another challenge for me. Like, that's another thing to grow through, to be in, you know, yeah. spiritual practice with. Right. So it's, yeah. it's, it's, yeah, I just really want to emphasize the whole part about you don't know right. It's not like, you don't like, yeah. It, it, or, or and you, maybe I'm just and you can't foresee person. it either I mean you can't you you have no idea what's coming I mean no. it's just no. and I mean you can do all the divination you want you have no idea yeah I mean you yeah. just have to stay prepared and yeah. aligned with yourself and with your true yeah. self and, and then you're ready you're... for whatever comes yes. then you will be ready for whatever comes yes yes uh, so that's just also been the core of any practice for me as long as it brings it brings me closer to myself, it brings me closer to my soul, soul and my my purpose, my my truth. Um, then then it will make sure that I'm always prepared for whatever comes. Right, it will keep me guided. It will keep me prepared, mm-hmm. and then I'm then I'm ready for for whatever comes. Yeah? Any final word? It, it feels like those were like those were like the final words. Like da da, uh, Tobias. I just want to say thank you once again for having joined me in this sacred conversation. Um, I'm going to link to various things that we've talked about. So if people want watching or listening want to connect or see, like I'll there will be a link, and then you can you can find all of the all of the things. <clears throat> I sent. There's a book coming at some point. I don't know. But like there's 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 more yes. to come from me. yeah there is yeah there's, that, there is I mean that's been the pipe that's been in the energetic pipeline for some years but I I think I yeah. hope it's we'll we'll see when it comes to terms yeah yeah no that's for sure yeah. um to those who are watching or listening like I said there is going to be a link where you will find all of the things that we've talked about and all that so um and um yeah. To everyone listening and watching, have a wonderful day. Lots of love. Bye. Thank you for having me on the show. (laughs) That is what I have for you in today's episode of Mastery with Maria Serafina. I hope it served you well. For all the deeds and details, click the link in the description and help me spread the love of this transmission by sharing it with a friend or on social media or leave me a comment or review. Have a wonderful day. God bless.